I now have the privilege and honor of introducing the Honorable Liz Sandals, who brings us greetings tonight from the Ministry of Education. Minister Sandals has represented the riding of Guelph as an MPP since her election in 2003 and has served as Ontario's Minister of Education since 2014. Minister Sandals has been a great supporter of our college, a good friend to us, and a good friend indeed to all registered early childhood educators around the province. I'd like to acknowledge and thank the Ministry of Education and the Government of Ontario on behalf of the college for its ongoing leadership in modernizing our province's early learning and childcare system. We also recognize the government's investments to implement full day kindergarten for all four and five year olds in the province and for the continued investments the government has made to support early learning and leadership in early childhood education. I'd also like to take this opportunity to extend our sincere gratitude to the Ministry of Education for its support in the college's second symposium on leadership in early childhood that was held last September. The symposium was again a great success and provided a perfect opportunity for the launching of the college's second leadership pilot project. Please join me in welcoming Honorable Minister of Education, Liz Sandals. Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much, Lois. It's great to see you. Uh, it's great to see all of uh, you who are here in the room. Uh, special hello to all uh, Lois's students at Cambrian <laughs> College and uh, to everybody else who's out there. So uh, uh, great to be back here. I think I was here for your fifth annual uh, meeting. So, uh, missed a year, but uh, back again, because you're such wonderful people. It's always great to come and visit with you. But when I was here before, I noted, I think, that the College of Early Childhood Educators has really grown and flourished since it was founded. I also spoke about the growth of the partnership between the college and the Ministry of Education. And I think I can say that at the Ministry of Education, we truly value our strong relationship with you and that we are both working towards common goals for the success of Ontario's children. That's because you are devoted to caring for our youngest learners. You are passionate, committed, and hardworking. And you're giving children what they need to learn gr to grow and feel valued. You're also giving parents and families what they want most, peace of mind. This means that when they leave home each morning, they're confident that their children are being left in safe and capable hands. This is so important because we know that the early years form the foundation of a child's entire life. So, sincerely thank you for giving all the children in this province the best possible start in life and putting them on a firm path to lifelong success. As you know, our government has been busy modernizing our child care and early years system, and the college and its members have been essential to this transformative work. On August 31st of last year, we reached a very important milestone in this process. That's when the Child Care and Early Years Act came into effect. And it's something we're very proud of. As you know, this legislation and its regulations replaced the very outdated Day Nurseries Act, creating a modern framework to govern Ontario's child care system. And I'd like to thank you for the important role that your college has played in shaping this legislation and its regulations. I'd especially like to say thank you to Lois, who, as you heard in the introductions, has uh, been a, a member of a number of committees uh, that, first of all, advised us on the actual legislation, and then more recently has been a very 
active and, and a very constructive and positive member of the advisory group that worked on the first tranche of regulations that uh, came in with uh, the uh, proclamation on August the 31st, but uh, more recently continues to be on the advisory committee that's working on the, the second tranche of regulations to go with the act. And I think uh, Shannon, Shannon, wave at everybody if they didn't see you already. Uh, I think Shannon gave you a very thorough description for those of you who are here that uh, of the d discussion around the next uh, tranche of regulations. But uh, through Lois and through other vehicles where you get to interact uh, with us, I really do uh, want you to know that the feedback and advice that you provide has been invaluable and we're grateful for the positive influence that you've made on this groundbreaking uh, new legislation. As part of this change, we issued a policy statement named How Does Learning Happen? as the foundational document to guide programming and pedagogy in the early years. How Does Learning Happen was first introduced in spring of 2014 and has had a significant influence on the sector. It's been integrated into our licensing requirements for child care and it will continue to help strengthen child care across the province. One of the key components of How Does Learning Happen is a focus on ongoing reflection and learning. And similarly, the Ministry is committed to supporting ongoing professional learning around this document and combined with the College of ECE's continuous professional learning program, the government and college are working together to provide a strong foundation for the sector. And you also know we're taking a staged, multi-phased approach to the new regulations, which I uh, just uh, mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, for the implementation of the Act. And uh, the consultation is continuing. And uh, I really do value the way in which we're able to collaborate, because we know that it's through your practical understanding of what it's like on the ground combined with some of the theoretical things that we're trying to do. It's when we put it all together uh, that it actually works. But it also means that we're sure that we're picking up your feedback and your interests as we move forward with further implementation of the new, le um, the new legislation. Quite frankly, it wouldn't be possible without you. So, one of the things that we've done, obviously, that's very transformative is uh, introducing full-day kindergarten. And once again, your role has been very important in uh, making sure that that works well. Beginning in 2010, with the first, uh, the first uh, phase of implementation, five years to roll it in all across the province, uh, we're now into our second full year of implementation. FDK is now available to all four and five year olds in publicly funded uh, schools throughout Ontario. So this does make FDK one of the biggest transformations in our education system in over a generation. And it's interesting when um, I meet with education ministers from all across Canada, there's tremendous interest in what we've done with full day kindergarten and a lot of interest in the structure that we have now with our ministry with having education and early years all under one ministry. Uh, I think we're, we're seeing more and more of the provinces across Canada moving to that model that we've got where early years and elementary and secondary uh, are all together under one ministry because I think more and more people are, are understanding that we really do need to think of it as a continuum as we move through the development of children through the early years, through primary, through uh, uh, on through elementary and then into secondary, that we need to 
think of that not as two separate silos, but a continuum. So once again, uh, this really has placed Ontario at the forefront of what's going on in early childhood education in North America, and thank you for your leadership in, in making that happen. The pattern of change and growth continues in the child care sector. Demand for licensed child care is on the rise, and the se sector really has responded with unprecedented growth. Uh, I think people often don't understand just how much the child care sector has grown. The perception is often that the sector has shrunk because of the introduction of FDK. But in fact, when you look at the licensing stats at the ministry, the total number of licensed child care spaces in Ontario in 2014-15 was about 351,000. That's an increase of 10% in one year, in that last year alone. If you look at the increase, well, uh, since 2003, it's over, it's well over a 50% increase. In fact, almost doubling, I guess, in, in, some, in some parts of it. And um, one of the things that, that's interesting is when you look at the data, um, it isn't just any one region. There's been an increase in child care spaces in all regions in Ontario. Now, obviously, if you go to Peel, the growth is quicker than in, I don't know, Thunder Bay, Bay or something. But if you go throughout the province, you see that the number of child care spaces is growing throughout Ontario and, interestingly, throughout all great age groups. So again, the sort of common perceptions aren't necessarily the truth when we actually look at the stats as to what's licensed out there. Um, we also are seeing, obviously, a growth in the licensing in school-based child care. So the community hub model that Lois is, is uh, advising us on as well, uh, we're seeing a growth in licensed before and after care uh, associated with uh, with schools so that that's been a, a growth sector so really quite exciting and in the light of this growth our government did take action to increase the wages for registered early childhood educators <laughs> and frontline child care professionals in licensed child care settings because we heard from you that one of the challenges uh, was particularly in the non-municipal daycare sector uh, that the, the uh, ECE wages were lagging significantly behind the ECE wages in the school sector. So uh, we're working on closing that, set, that gap. This represents a $269 million investment over three years to close the wage gap between the licensed child care sector and school boards. In 2015, the wage enhancement funding supported an increase of up to a dollar per hour, plus up to 17.5% in benefits for registered early childhood educators and other program staff working in licensed child care programs. The home child care enhancement, and this was for people who work in licensed home child care, not unlicensed home child care, just to be absolutely clear, um, that supported an increase of up to $10 a day for the licensed home child care providers. This will be followed by another wage increase in 2016 for eligible child care professionals working in the licensed child care sector. Um, we, we are still working on the details of how we will roll it out, but when we get it rolled out, it'll be retroactive back to January the 1st of this year of 2016. So we're working on that now. This investment is about recruiting and retaining valued caregivers because we know that ECEs and program staff 
are key to children, child's future success, and we want to make sure that we don't just have our FDK programs well-staffed, but we also are sure that we have our licensed child care sector well-staffed. Another important initiative we've committed to publicly, and where our partnership with you will be of paramount importance, is Best Start Child and Family Centers. This aligns with our commitment to build a system of integrated early years programs and services that contribute to healthy child development today and a stronger future tomorrow. So as some of you will be aware, we've been engaging our partners to develop an integrated approach to these family support programs. So just if you sort of missed the uh, conversation, this includes the Ontario Early Years Centers, the Parent and Family Literacy Centers, the Child Care Resource Centers, and Better Beginnings, Better Future programs. So we're looking at uh, how do we do uh, bringing... I think more consistency. One of the things that we find is that um, early years program in one place can look quite totally different to an early years program in another place. And what we need to figure out, obviously we still want there to be space for local flexibility because different communities are meeting slightly different needs. But we also need to figure out what is it that is the core service, the core components of what an early years center should be doing or a parent and family literacy center. So we need to think through how do we rationalize that part of the services that we provide to families. The integration of early year programs will raise awareness of what programs and services are available and create a seamless system that families can access easily. And one of the things that we've discovered with the research that the uh, ministry staff have done so far is that in fact in many communities there actually isn't broad awareness even of the existence of the programs, that sometimes they're a really well-kept secret. I was uh, talking a few weeks ago to a group in Guelph, my hometown, uh, talking about uh, Syrian refugee families, and said, you know, if you're sponsoring a family and they've got preschoolers, try and get mom and the, the young person out to the early years center, because that will give mom a connection with the preschooler into the services that are in the community rather than being isolated at home. And I could tell from the reaction in the audience that the vast majority of people in the audience didn't have a clue what I was talking about. And that that's backed up by the research, is there's this great resource there and nobody knows about it. So we need to do something about that. Uh, so we actually have been talking to parents, to caregivers, to families, to you, our partners, um, across the sector so that we can understand what is it we need to do uh, to rationalize and integrate these services. But I think you can hear that in what I'm saying that there's a theme here. It's partnership, collaboration, the shared values, all of those things go together to uh, support our relationship that we have with you so that we can continue to serve children and make sure that our children uh, are getting the best service possible. In the midst of great change and transformation in our child care and early years sector, we remain firm in our shared commitment to Ontario's children. So in closing, I once again just want to say thank you for the amazing work that you do all across the province. In many cases, you are the child's first teacher outside of the home, and you're putting Ontario on the leading edge of early childhood services. So thank you so much. Uh, as, e as ECEs, I think uh, we share the college's values, we share your ideals, and it's great to see over the last seven years how not just ECEs as a profession, but in particular the college has grown and thrived, and I think really um, 
really matured uh, to become a full service college. Uh, so thank you for that. You're doing amazing work. Keep it up. <laughs> Thank you very much, Minister. Thank you for your time and for your leadership, and thank you for your support to registered early childhood educators around the province. We, we so enjoy um, our, our partnership, but above all, thank you so much for making Ontario a great place for children and their families.